hiding in the trees across the lock, are the enemy. They're about to ambush the Royal Marines of 539 Assault Squadron. From the initial point of contact, the uh, gunboats will go firm, assess the situation, a massive rate of fire will go down. That's just to get the initial effect on the enemy to win the firefight and to just, uh, so initially it's a shock tactic, just to try and overpower them with a uh, superior firepower. The boats will uh, alternate and spin around and make different 180 degree movements so that we can keep a rate of fire going even when certain guns go down with weapon stoppages, barrel changes and uh, ammunition changes. It's all part of exercise raging torrent. It's a drill that we practice uh, to uh, allow us to clear waterways, uh, normally in a riverine environment. Uh, and what we look to do is uh, overmatch the enemy with firepower initially and then land a ground combat element who will then sweep through the ambush position uh, and secure that position and then allow us to proceed on down the waterway itself. 539 Assault Squadron are the only UK military unit to operate the offshore raiding craft in a tactical context. They're also the only British force to operate the hovercraft. They can carry up to 16 marines and have often been used in casualty extractions. It's a lot different to driving the uh, Orc. As you see, we're on the air cushion. Um, most of our training is done in the sea, so it's good to get up to Scotland and uh, do it in a riverine environment because it's a lot more enclosed. There's a lift fan belt in the craft, uh, basically forces air down, which creates a cushion underneath the uh, skin which lifts it up and then in turn the propeller is what propels the, the craft forward. The squadron is permanently at five days readiness to deploy anywhere in the world by sea, land or air. And with the ambush over, the Marines move into what will be their home for the night. Normally, the Royal Marines of 539 Assault Squadron can be found working on the waters of southwest England. But for a two week exercise, the squadron and its support teams have relocated to Scotland. This is Loch Ness, and in the summer, it would be something of a tourist hotspot. But with the winter weather now on the scene, it's actually providing some rather challenging conditions for those operating on exercise raging torrents. The main element that the hovercraft will be uh, concerned about is the direction and strength of the wind. Um, because they're floating on a cushion of air, they have to compensate for the direction of wind to achieve the direction they actually want to go in. And that could mean that they're facing in one direction, but traveling in totally different, which can be quite confusing for the coxswains. For the orcs, those crews, they're out exposed to the elements. So the wind and the rain is going to be a challenge for them to cope with personally, but won't affect the actual handling of the craft. But to get this far, first they had to negotiate the Caledonian Canal's lock systems. It was as much an unusual sight for the locals as it was for some of the marines themselves. One of the younger lads actually said to me he's never actually been in a lock before, so I had to see the system and working closely with the civilian uh, authority here to get that done. Yeah, it was just another thing that we bring to the party that it's, it's capable, and we are capable of that, even getting the hovercraft, which are sometimes seen as very fragile uh, vessels, that you know, they can still do that. But yeah, the most challenging part, I think, of this exercise so far has definitely been the weather. It's, like I say, doable, but it definitely brings something, an extra factor that you've got to really factor into uh, your planning and even just the care and care of the lads because it is rather cold outside. They've chosen Scotland because next year the squadron deploys on exercise in Norway. The conditions and terrain are as close as it gets to replicating those of the Norwegian fjords. And it's the first time in around 10 years the squadron has exercised on this scale along the Scottish waterways. It's also a first for some of the newer boat crews. Yeah, I'm recently qualified landing craft officer, so this is the first exercise which uh, rolled out as a boat group or even as a squadron. So this has been a really good opportunity for me to sort of get in amongst the, the, um, the skills and drills, the SOPs, 
all the lads have done this for, for quite a while, so this is me coming into a, a well worked up troop and squadron uh, and learning, learning all the sort of aspects of being a landing craft officer. The squadron left Inverness in the early hours, finishing the day at the far end of Loch Ness at their forward support base. They'll stay here overnight before continuing the journey to Fort William. Taking six offshore raiding craft and two hovercraft through the Caledonian Canal was never going to be the quickest of tasks. Fort Augustus is the next in a series of 29 locks that the vessels need to get through before reaching their finish point in Fort William. It's the first time I think we've gone through locks. We've been on uh, some quite busy rivers before, like the Thames, and uh, we went on the River Humber a couple of years ago, but we didn't go through any lock systems there, so this is the first time going through the locks, so it's so quite an experience. It's similar to a dock of a ship, but so it, it hasn't been that challenging, but for some of the, the newer guys it, it had been a little bit challenging, but with a little bit of quick teach, they've managed to pull through and get through okay, no problems. There's around five of these locks within the Fort Augustus flight and each one has around one and a half million litres of water in it. It should take the Marines around an hour to get from the bottom to the top where they can carry on to their next location. Fort Augustus is just the next in a series of 29 locks that the vessels need to get through before reaching their finish point in Fort William. Scotland offers a realistic but really challenging training environment. Uh, it takes the guys away from the comfort zone of the southwest where they're used to operating, puts them into a mountainous environment and allows us to prepare for future training and operations in places such as Norway. The main effort of the whole exercise is integration. It's all about integrating the different craft types, the, the different crews and the different operating conditions, as well as our support element using dark blue navy to provide engineering support and real-time life support and to create one coherent capability. 539 Assault Squadron are normally based in Plymouth. We've spent the last couple of years uh, deploying abroad on little training teams and not, so it's the first time that the squadron's been able to get together as a one and uh, deploy like this and facilitate ourselves without any help from others or ship. So yeah, it's been uh, a new experience for a lot of lads as many of the lads are quite new to the job.